The year is 2100. We have failed to abide by the Paris Climate Accord. The temperature is now three degrees above the pre-industrial average. Resources are scarce. Fossil fuels have run out. Weather events are unpredictable and violent. Can you build a resilient community under these conditions, or will you collapse? I've been teaching the climate crisis for several years now, and I found that students unfortunately had quite an unrealistic view of what the future holds. I had been asking students to design a dream future, a dream community that would make sense for a future that they can look forward to. I started assigning points so that students could only spend a certain number of resources or population to their dream community project and the more this progressed the more I realized that a serious game format would give the best results in terms of really making students and teachers realize what are the boundaries within which the future can be built. Collapse is a game designed to help participants gain awareness of the real-world resource limitations and the effects of climate change on planning and building a resilient community in the future. The game puts forward several conditions under which communities could collapse, such as running out of resources, running out of population, having an energy infrastructure that isn't built to last, or not planning or thinking systemically. This really allows participants to feel and experience what kind of world we're going to be living in and what kind of skills are needed to make communities resilient and survive through the hard times ahead. That means they're going to have to make choices. Not everything is possible and their survival will depend on the quality of the choices that they've made throughout the game. Collapse is a team-based game in which different teams compete to have the most resilient community under conditions of climate warming. How do you do that? Well, there are two ways to win. One is to be the team with the most well-being points at the end of the game. Two is to be the last team standing when all other teams have collapsed. How do you collapse? You collapse if you run out of resources, run out of population, or run out of well-being. The game is played where each team has a board. Each team will be able to choose cards to build their infrastructure with energy, transport, agriculture, security, art and culture. And each team has a set number of resources and population. Before you start to play, you need to set up. If you have a game master, the game master will need to prepare the central table. The central table acts like a bank where players can pick cards, exchange cards, or take tokens for their board. I'm going to show you how to set up the central table. You should take each category of cards, yellow for energy, red for agriculture, green for transport, and divide them up into categories clearly visible on the table in front of you. You should have 12 of each type. You should now have 12 wind, 12 nuclear, 12 biofuels, 12 solar, 12 hydro energy cards, 12 conventional agriculture, 12 organic agriculture, 12 permaculture cards, 12 bicycle, 12 EV, 12 animal, and 12 rail transport cards. You're now going to set up the security, art, and culture cards. You have 10 of each. These are your bonus cards. You should mix them and put them face down on the table. These are your weather event cards. You should mix them and put them face down on the table. The final task before you start is to sort the tokens by color. Yellow tokens for yield, green token for resources, red tokens for distance, blue tokens for energy, pink tokens for population, purple tokens for well-being. There are also black tokens which represent negative well-being. Before the game starts, you should place a value of 50 resources in the resource circle here on the left-hand side. So you should add the numbers on the tokens and that should add up to 50. You also need to add a value of 25 population with pink tokens in the right-hand side. We are now going to enter the setup phase. The setup phase usually lasts 60 minutes. You have 60 minutes to build your energy mix, your transport mix, your agriculture mix, your security, art and culture. 
Be careful what you choose, because this will determine whether you survive or collapse. You start by choosing your energy mix. With your team, you must decide how many of your resources and population you want to allocate to your energy mix. You can buy as many energy cards as you want, so long as there are still cards remaining at the bank. However, be careful, you will also need to use your resource and population tokens to buy your transport, agriculture, art, security and culture. So you have to make considered decisions whether you want to spend more on your energy, your transport, your agriculture, knowing that you will need the resources you get from your energy mix to feed the rest of your infrastructure. You have different options to choose from. It's entirely up to you which one of these energy sources you want to place in your energy mix. You can also pick several of the same type of cards, so long as there are cards left in the bank and you can afford it with your resources and population. For example, I want nuclear energy. For nuclear energy, I need 10 resources, one population, and I get five energy. If I want nuclear energy, I place this card in the energy mix box on the board. I then look through my resources tokens and place the number of resources, in this case 10, on top of the card and the number of population next to it on top of the card. I then go back to the bank and get the output, fine energy. I continue to do this until I'm satisfied with my energy mix. In this instance, I have chosen to create an energy mix with nuclear, hydro and two cards of solar. Notice I did not pile the cards on top of one another. This is because you may need to flip the cards over during the game. The output generated by my energy mix is here in blue. 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1. I now have 10 energy outputs that I can use to build the rest of my infrastructure. Let's move to transport. I have four options to choose from in transport, and all of them come with a cost in resources and a cost in energy. Let me see what I can afford to buy with the energy generated in my mix. For instance, I can buy bicycle transport for one resource and one energy. I place it here, take one of the energy tokens, place it on the card, one of my resource tokens, and also place it on the card. I now get one red distance token as the output. I can continue adding transport for so long as I still have resources, energy and population to spend. Again, you can have several of the same types of transport so long as they're still available in the bank. What happens if you want to add a card and it's no longer in the bank? Too bad, we live on a finite planet, you'll have to pick something else. You have three types of agriculture cards to choose from, conventional, organic and permaculture. These cards will cost you quite heavily in resources, population, energy and distance. But be careful, because you have to be able to feed your population. That means you need to have a yield output that is at least equal to the numbers on the pink tokens. Sometimes you may need to break up your tokens into smaller amounts to fit them over the card. Yield tokens should be placed in the bottom left hand corner. I have 25 population to feed, I now have 26 yield output. That is sufficient to feed my population. Keep an eye out at the end of the turn that you have enough yield to feed your entire population. However, I don't have any energy left to build my security, art and culture, but I still have resources and population, so I'm going to add extra energy. You can do that. So long as you're in the setup phase, you can add or take away or change cards. With what I have left, I have chosen to prioritize security. I place my security card here, the two energies that I have left, my distance, my resources and my population. Now security gives me one well-being. Well-being tokens go here on the bottom right hand side. You win this game, remember, by having the most well-being tokens. If you run out of well-being, you lose the game. 
Security is important. Without security, you can be invaded or you can have civil wars on your hand. The penalty for having zero security at the end of a turn is that you must give one population token back to the bank. Art and culture yield much higher well-being. Two well-being for art, three well-being for culture. Art and culture are quite resource intensive, so you need to make sure that you have everything else in your infrastructure covered before you can afford art and culture. However, the more art and culture you have, the more likely you are to win this game. This is the setup phase. If you still have time on your hands and the clock is still running in the first 60 minutes, you can discuss with your team whether you're happy with your mix or whether you want to change things around. Remember, there is no penalty for changing things around during the setup phase, but you will lose one resource token per change after that. The game starts in 2101. To start the game, each team should pick at random a bonus card. The game master can show them the card deck and they can pick a card. Some cards are good for your team. For instance, this card gives you one extra security unit for no extra cost. You place your bonus cards in the bonus box on your board. Some cards are not so good for your team, such as this cholera card, which means that you lose two populations permanently. You may apply the damages or take the bonuses from your bonus card straight away. Once the bonus cards have been dealt, you may ask one of the players to pick a weather card at random. For instance, for this turn, an animal pandemic occurs. You then refer to the text on the weather sheet. Zoonotic pandemic. While we were all busy dealing with COVID-19, another silent killer was raging. Bird flu. Hundreds of thousands of birds were slaughtered, but it could be a lot worse. Zoonotic pandemics could affect any kind of animal or several species at once. Any agricultural system that relies on animals, which is all of them, is bound to take a hit. You then look for the effects along the sheet. For instance, here, the pandemic has no impact on the energy production. However, in the transport category, two units of animals are permanently lost. When it comes to agriculture, there is severe damage. One unit of conventional agriculture is permanently lost, one unit of permaculture is permanently lost, and two units of organic agriculture are permanently lost. These should be removed from the board, and one resource penalty should be paid back to the bank. The rest of the tokens go back in your hand. For instance, here, one unit of permaculture is taken out, I remove these units, return this to the bank, pay one resource damage, keep the rest in my hand so that I can buy new units if I still have resources spare later in the turn. There will be cascading effects. For instance, if we have a polar vortex collapse, a polar vortex collapse causes infrastructures to freeze as the Arctic air goes over more southern latitudes. This will impact things such as hydroenergy as the water freezes or windmills as the windmills freeze up. In this instance, your units are temporarily disabled for this year. To temporarily disable a unit, turn it over and then the resources attached to it are also flipped over and remain attached to the unit. You cannot reallocate them. Since we have flipped over solar energy, the output of the solar energy is also lost for this turn. That means I need to remove one energy from the board. Now, I have taken out this energy. This means my animal transport can no longer run. This is what we call a cascading effect. This is also now disabled. But given that there were two distances associated with this card, I must also shut down my agriculture that was relying on distance. And so the cascading effect goes on until you reach a point where you lose yield. This had six yield output. I need to flip over six yield. I now no longer have enough yield to feed my population. That means that I have a famine on my hands. And at the end of the turn, once all damages are applied, 
I must return one unit of population back to the bank. However, this unit of population was gainfully employed, which means that I must also, by a cascading effect, close down my energy unit. Now, what if I say I would like to free up the rest of the resources in this unit? Can I destroy it? Yes, you can, but you must pay one resource penalty to the bank for every single unit that you want to get rid of. The famine and plenty rule should be applied at the end of every turn before units are brought back online. If you have less yield once all the flipped over yields are discounted, then there are population, you lose one unit of population. It doesn't matter how big the difference is between your yield and your actual population, you only lose one unit per turn for the famine. If by chance you have more yield than population, then you gain one population. You may now turn over the cards that were temporarily disabled at the end of the turn. If once the cards are turned over, you have zero security left, you have a civil war on your hands and you lose one population unit. If you lose population units two turns in a row, you get a negative well-being point. Once all cascading effects have been applied and you have disabled all the units that need to be disabled, it's time to decide whether a team wants to invade another team or not. In order to invade another team, the team needs to have a higher security than the other team. They will disable their security for the full extent of the next turn, making them more vulnerable to invasion in turn at the next turn. So they sacrifice their security for this one turn, and then they may take two units of resources or one unit of population from a competing team. Once you've done your civil war penalty, your invasion, your famine and plenty, you can also rebuild units that were destroyed, provided you have enough resources, population or energy to build them. You can rebuild as much as you like, so long as you can afford it. But remember, if you build too much and you need to take it down later, there will be a one resources penalty per unit that you take down. If at any point during a turn, the well-being is negative, then the team must shout collapse and exit the game. You've now completed a turn. To move to the next turn, the Game Master should call to order and say, we are now in the year 2102. Remember to distribute the bonus cards at the start of the turn, and then you may pick another weather event, and the cycle repeats. It's recommended to play between three and six turns of this game, depending on how long you have. Each turn roughly takes 15 minutes. At the end of the agreed upon number of turns, the winning team is the team with the highest number of well-being points. If there's a draw between two teams, then the team with the largest population wins. In this game, as in the real world, you're going to be faced with some seriously tough choices. You're going to have to make hard decisions and it's going to hurt. So get ready, make hard choices and don't collapse. <laughs>